صلی اللہ رسول کریم اما آباد سو وی وی ڈوئنگ ویلکم رمضان دس از پارٹ ٹو اینڈ ہیئر ول کنٹینیو وت اسحور بل افطار سو دا پری ڈان اینڈ فاسٹ بریکنگ میلس سو ہیئر واٹ رمضان ڈز اٹ ٹرینس اس ٹو سبمٹ ٹو ہوم ٹو اللہ سبحان اللہ تعالیٰ اینڈ وی آل آر سلیف آف اللہ سبحان اللہ تعالیٰ اینڈ یو نو وی ریفرینس آور سیلف فرام ایٹنگ اینڈ ڈرنکنگ انٹل سن سیٹ he it also uh, you know um, like it's mustahab to eat suhoor like you know uh, that's uh, before fajr we eat suhoor so there is a hadith regarding that abu darda radiyallahu anhu narrated that three things are from the uh, prophethood sunna what are they first thing to hasten in iftar opening the fast means when time comes you have to open the fast not to delay you know like if t- even after azan people they delay and still they don't open the fast no it's not so but not even before okay but do it on the time don't you know delay that but what about the suhoor second thing is the suhoor meal you can delay it means in what sense you can delay means you have morsel of food in your mouth and you you want to finish that that azan is going on just finish it that it doesn't mean that you know or delay in sense you going to take more food no it doesn't mean that okay and uh, and put the right hand on the top of the left hand this is uh, in sala so this is from sahi jami as sabir suhoor meal for a believer there are blessing in the suhoor and it is also a sunnah of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so we have to do suhoor no matter like you know you can drink water or you can have dates whatever like i know that time you don't want to have anything but it's better you know have something because the whole day it has to go and the most important thing is the you know that's the sunnah and that's the baraka take the suhoor meal for there is in it much blessing means uh, uh it is a baraka so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying there is a baraka in it this is in sahih al bukhari so inshallah we should adopt that no matter how much you eat but make a niya to eat something prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam called arbaz bin sariya radiyallahu anhu to join him in eating suhoor with the words like you know arbaz come to the blessed food sunan abu daud So here we learn that you know it is mubarak or it has lot of baraka to have suhoor suhoor is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Abdullah bin Haris narrated from a uh, person amongst the companion of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he went went to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam while he was sitting and eating suhoor he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said this suhoor is a blessing that Allah has given you so do not leave it this is in musnad ahmad so we we should eat suhoor that is a sunna and it has a sunna as well as it has what baraka so why why you want to leave the baraka mihdam bin madi qarib radiyallahu anhu reports that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said you all should make the morning meal suhoor meal compulsory upon yourself at it is the blessed food of the morning this is in sunan an-nasai actually many people they think like you know before sleeping they want to eat something and they don't want to get up because they don't want to you know interrupt their sleep that's not right you know this is ayyam and madudad only few number days and this is the time allah is saying it's a baraka it's a sunna so get up for the tahajjud do your tahajjud and have your suhoor with the family inshallah one must have suhoor even if it is a sip of water as i mentioned before like you know you can have sip of water or dates anything you know you can have uh, maybe some protein whatever you like but have it because you know uh, if you have dates and protein this will help you it will be in your um, tummy for longer time because the whole day it has to go the by by the time you open your so uh, like if star it's going to be like 8 o'clock almost so many hours you know you have to spend the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam there is a barka in eating so who do not leave it even if one is drink a sip of water this is musnad ahmad mercy descends upon those who eat so mercy 
It is related by Ibn Umar radiyallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Verily Allah and His angels sent mercy upon those who eat suhoor." Allah is sending mercy those who eat suhoor. So why don't we avail that? Subhanallah. So here, when Allah subhanahu wa taala is saying, "So Inna Allah wa Malaikatu yasulun al al musahirin." So verily Allah and His angels sent mercy upon those who eat suhoor. This means that Allah showers of them His mercy and blessing, while the angels pray for the mercy and forgiveness for them. Dates are the best suhoor. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Naam suhoorul mu'minin tamar." Tamar is the fresh dates, you know. If you are familiar with the dates, there are different kinds of date, and that too, you know, different kinds, taste, color, and in uh, black also darker black, brownish black, and it's so delicious. It's and it's very beneficial also. And you remember, like um, when Maria Malislam was pregnant, and um, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala ordered her, you know, just uh, um, you know. Um, Uh, like uh, shake the tree, and the dates will fall, and you can eat it. And it's good for the health. And it's mentioned in Quran also. Dates are good for us. So eat a balanced and healthy meal at suhoor in order to stay active and fresh throughout the day. You can be active, fresh, and able to perform all the fard prayers and all the ob- obligatory rituals and other acts of worship properly. So. For fasting person, there are two joys. What are they? The one you know, right? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, the fasting person has two occasions of joy. One when he breaks his fast because of his breaking it, and the other one when he meets his Lord Allah subhanahu wa taala because of the reward for his fast. This is in Sahih al Bukhari. Lisiyamu farhatan. Farhatan. This is dual. Two, uh, two uh, happiness. Farhatan huma is a aftara fariha. You know aftara fariha. You know you are happy when you have your aftar. But is a lakia rabbahu when we meet our rab. Lakia is meeting rabbahu your rab. Fariha be so mihi when we are fasting because of fasting. Subhanallah, that's a reward. It is must known to break the fast early. Means it's on time. As I mentioned before, it doesn't mean that you know before the time and you're gonna open it. No, on the time, but you are not gonna delay. We should have the fast breaking meal iftar as soon as the sun sets. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the people will continue to do well so long as they hasten to break the fast. This is in Sahih Muslim. لا يزال الناس بخير ما أجلوا فطرة. The fast should be broken with the dates or plain water. Okay, I hope you understand. There is no such thing like breaking the fast with salt. That is cultural. It's not from the Sunnah. Okay, Sunnah is different and culture is different. They are following the culture, like you know, some people their forefathers they used to it and they still do it. But what our Prophet, our beloved Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did, we should do that. What is that? Like break the fast with dates. If you don't have dates, then with the water. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if anyone you of you is fasting, let him break his fast with the dates. In case he does not have them, then with water. Verily, water is purifier. This is in Sahih Al Jami. So here it's clearly mentioned ala tamri. If you don't have tamar, then ma'in with the water. Reward for giving food to a fasting person to break his fast, isn't it? This is so nice. Like you know, being a woman, we get chance to make the food for the others. We feel so happy, isn't it? Like you know, when you make food and you have that intention, you know, to feed others. So that's so nice. So, inshallah, we should avail this opportunity. It doesn't mean that you're going to spend hours and hours. Just make two simple meals or good, delicious meals, or a complete meal, and then you can serve to the fasting person, and uh, you can invite them and have them in a systematic manner. 
Prophet ﷺ said, He who gives food to a fasting person to break his fast will receive the same reward. SubhanAllah. Except that nothing will be reduced from the fasting person's reward. Nothing is reduced. Here, كَانَ لَهُ مِسْلُ أَجْرِهِ It's misl, same ajr. غَيْرَ أَنَّهُ لَا يَنْقُدُّ مِنْ أَجْرِ السِّيَامِ It's not, like, it's not going to reduce. It's going to be same what the fasting person is doing. So I was thinking like, you know, many of us can't fast because of the old age or because of the sickness, because of the pregnancy, nursing and so on and so forth. Why don't we avail this opportunity and grab it? You know, we want ajar, we want more good deed, isn't it? It's a sale going on. Just avail it, grab it. So things to do, just a reminder, moderation, preparing the food, prepare suhoor and nice suhoor, you know, make sure it has a lot of protein and a lot of, you know, if you're not having that, especially our children, make sure they should have something and we should have something. We want our fasting to be good, inshallah. And also avoid greasy food and, you know, the food which makes you feel time being full, but later on you feel very much hungry. So make sure have a good food. And give the leftover food to the needy person. I know in some places it's hard to find out the needy people. So better you can save the food or you can, you know, give it to your um, uh, neighbors if they are Muslim. I know because in overseas, some countries, we are not supposed to give like, you know, uh, what we prepared food. We can only give packaged food for the neighbors who are non-Muslim. So make sure like, you know, you prepare how much you want. Don't waste the food. And uh, invocation for iftar. Zahaba zam'u bittila'at uruqi wa sabbid ajaru insha'Allah. The thirst has gone and the veins are quenched and the reward is confirmed if Allah wills. Sunan Abu Da'ud. So here, supplication of those who provide with iftar. You know, you are going somewhere and you want to uh, do the dua so it's there in the fortress of muslim so you could find it there you know this is the dua aftara indakum siya siya imuna wa akala ta'amakum al abraru wa sallatu alaykum malaika what is the meaning of this may the fasting persons break fast with you the righteous partake in your meals and the angels pray for the blessings for you. This is in Sunan Abu Da'ud. So we should make dua, you know, whenever um, we are going and having the food and somebody um, is giving food and we are breaking our fast day, please make this dua. Okay, inshallah. And Ramadan, Shahrul Ghufran. What is Ghufran? It's from Ghafara to the month of forgiveness. Yes. So Allah is most forgiving and merciful. His forgiveness is vast. Have hope. And He loves to forgive it. It is His promise that anyone who feels remorse for having sinned and repents sincerely. What is the key thing? Sincerely. Shall be forgiven. Allah says in Surah Al-Najm, Ayah number 32, Allah zina yashtabinu ona. كَبَائِرِ الْإِسْمِ الْوَالْفَوَاهِشَ إِلَّا لَلْمَا إِنَّ رَبَّكَ وَاسِيُونَ مَغْفِرَا Here, Allah Zina Yashtanibu is from Jam, those who avoid. What they avoid? Kabaira is the major sins. So here, Kabaira sins, major sins, on which uh, it, there will be Had, major sins. And also Fawahish, that is immoralities. And fawahish can be, you know, it can be uh, uh, bad language too, bad gestures, behavior, or anything, you know, sinful acts. Only committing slight ones, indeed, your Lord is vast in forgiveness. So, in the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna rabbaka vasiyun maghfira, vast forgiveness. So keep on ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please forgive me. Allah maghfir la. 
استغفر الله اتوب لي سو ڈفرنٹ کائنڈس آف استغفر اللہ مغفر لی زمبی کل ہو دق ہو و جل ہو و اول ہو و آخر ہو و لانیت ہو و سر ہو سو مینی استغفار دعاز وی شوڈ میک واٹ ایور ایف یو ڈونٹ ریمبر اینی جس سے استغفر اللہ ہی اتوب لے فاسٹنگ ڈیورنگ دا ڈے اینڈ پرینگ ایٹ دا نائٹ از اے سورس آف ایکسپیٹنگ سینس مغفرا So here, whoever fasts during Ramadan out of sincere faith and hoping to attain Allah's reward, then all his past sins will be forgiven. This is in Sahih Al-Bukhari. Man saama Ramadana imana wa ihtasaba ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min zambihi. All the sins forgiven. The fasting men and women are promised forgiveness. We all need forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the men and women who observe psalm obligatory fasting during the month of Ramadan and the optional nawafil fasting. Allah has prepared for them forgiveness and a great reward. What is that? Jannah. This is in Al-Ahsab, ayah number 35. The one who finds Ramadan but does not attain forgiveness is unfortunate. So keep on asking forgiveness. Astaghfirullah. And at one occasion, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ascended the pulpit and said, Ameen, Ameen. You know, he was going ascending and he was saying, Ameen. It was said, O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you ascend the member and said, Ameen, Ameen, like three times. He said, Yes, Jibreel Alaihi Wasallam came to me and said, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever finds Ramadan then dies and is not forgiven, he will enter hell. And Allah will cast him far away from his mercy. So he said, Ameen. So I said, Ameen. So you know, this is a longer hadith. And in that context, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, ask forgiveness and Allah will forgive you. So we should avail this opportunity. If he don't ask, that is, he is very unfortunate. The time of suhoor is ideal for seeking forgiveness. You should do with shaur, you know. Okay, I did this, this, this. And try to understand to whom you are talking to. You are talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Rabb, our majesty. So here, the virtue of Allah's chosen people, they seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They ask secretly during this time. Allah says in the Quran, Bil ahsari hum yastaghfirun. This is in Surah Al-Zariyat, ayah number 18. And in the hours before the dawn, they would ask forgiveness. See, well, isharihum yastaghfirun. It's from sahar. Like, you know, during the time of suhoor, they ask istaghfar. They ask forgiveness. So ask forgiveness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When half of the night or two-third of it's over, Allah blessed and exalted descends to the lowest heaven and says, Is there anyone? who invokes me that I may respond to his invocation for his, you know, dua. Is there anyone who asks me for something that I may give it to him? Is there anyone who asks my forgiveness that I may forgive him? And Allah continues saying it till its day breaks. Means till the Fajr times. This is it, Sanu Sunan al-Darimi. Uh, and here in this chapter, what the things we have to remember, we did for the makfira, right? So things we should feel regret for our sins and accept our faults, cry over them and seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pray for the forgiveness for all the Muslims, you know. Allahumma astaghfir laha al-muslimina wal-mu'minina wal-mu'minat. You know, all the istighfar and also do istighfar especially at the time of suhoor. And remind your family members as well. And memorize the words of istighfar at least 70 to 100 times. Inshallah, we're going to learn different types of istighfar, inshallah. So here, the e- easiest way. Astaghfir Allah al-Azim al-Lazi la ilaha illa hu al-Hayyu al-Qayyum wa atubu ilayhi. I will repeat again, okay? Two words very easy to remember. It's Astaghfirullah al-Azim. Azim means great. 
الذي لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم وأتوب إليه. I seek the forgiveness of Allah, the one besides whom there is no worthy of worship, the living, the eternal. I repent to Him. This is in Sunan Al Tirmizi. So here and then, what we want to attend in Ramadan, Shahrul Taqwa, month of piety. The main objective of fasting is to acquire La Allakum that Taqoon, that is Taqwa. So here we learn in ayah number one eighty three, Surah Al Baqarah, Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu kutiba alaykum al-siyama kama kutiba ala al-lazina min qablikum min qablikum la allakum tattaqun. O you who believe, decree upon you is fasting, and it was decreed upon those before you that you may become righteous. And we all want to attend taqwa. So try for the taqwa. In order to achieve taqwa, what we have to do? It's not enough just avoiding eating and drinking during the fast, but one should also stay away from all kinds of sins. Okay, if we are uh, able to abstain from the permissible halal food, like you know, while fasting, then it's even more important to avoid prohibited actions, you know, haram, such as lie, cheating. Backbiting, quarrels, negative thoughts, etc. And eating is one of our most favorable pastimes, isn't it? Like we are abstaining from eating because we are fasting, which is very difficult to control. You know, sometimes people say um, hungry, angry, and uh, because of that, you know. But Alhamdulillah, we control our hunger. However, staying hungry is difficult during. Fasting in the starting, it will take time, but inshallah, uh, Allah will give you strength and you can overcome that. You know, you overcome and you feel like you know good. And I, I feel like during Ramadan time, we have more energy as compared to other days, even though we are fasting. Alhamdulillah, that's the rahma of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu narrated that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. Fasting is not just abstaining from eating and drinking, but fasting is also refraining from vain talk. What is that? Love and foul or obscene language. You know, using bad words, bad language, bad gesture, or making the actions or so on. Sexual actions that is rafas. If uh, one of you is being verbally abused or annoyed, like you know somebody is annoying or verbally doing anything wrong to you, what you will say? You should say, "I am fasting," and don't reply them. You know, just say, "I am fasting," and move on. So this is in Sahih Al Tarqib. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Some fasting people get nothing." Which this is very scary, you know. People get nothing from their fast apart from hunger, and some people who tend to pray at night will get nothing from their standing except sleeplessness. This is in. Sunan Ibn Majah. So be careful when you are fasting. We want full ajr, full reward from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu narrated that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Whoever does not give up lying, false speech, and evil action, Allah is not in need of his leaving his food and drink." This is in Sahih Al Bukhari. Likewise, in another tradition, has been Malik radiyallahu anhu said, like Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. Whoever does not stop speaking falsehood, like in you know kazib, and acting in accordance with it, Allah has no need of him giving up his food and drink. Don't lie. A mu'min can't be a liar. It is unnecessary to pay attention to the hidden aspects of worship, such as sincerity, love, hope, and fear of Allah. As it's to maintain the physical and obvious rituals. In fact, that that is meant by achievement of true piety. That is taqwa. So actually, what taqwa is, you know, doing the obedience to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and abstaining from the haram and all the love and also the abusive language, anything which displeases Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And what is taqwa? Like you know, you are. Uh, taking care of your garments in such a way that you are passing through a thorny bushes, but no thorn is getting pierced through your garment. 
you are taking care in such a manner so you have to take care of yourself in such a manner that you are not affected by these things and you control yourself and do with the fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, remind yourself you know whatever you are doing for the sake of allah abstaining from food drink and all the haram things uh, that is for the sake of allah and uh, you have to utilize your time in the good way productive way and uh, you know reading quran doing zikr doing the good deeds doing the sadaqa and we have to check yourself you know self analyzing you know what we are doing and um, seek the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind yourself every day like you know maybe this is my last ramadan or maybe this is my last day we don't know allah knows when we going to die and nobody is guaranteed in order to attain piety taqwa supplicate make dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know allahumma inni asaluka alhuda wat tuqa wal afafa wal ghina it's a small dua Uh, I'll uh, read the translation and I'm going to repeat it again inshallah. Oh Allah indeed I ask you for guidance Allah's consciousness chastity and contentment. Allahumma means oh Allah inni indeed I as aluka I ask you al huda the huda guidance but tuqa you know um, Allah's consciousness that is taqwa and wal afafa is the chastity and what we are asking waqina is contentment so we should be content with what with you know allah going to give you uh, whatever you are doing for the sake of allah have faith with allah that uh, allah will be pleased and try to please allah not the people subhanakallahumma bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka